Saint Scholastica is the patron saint of students, books, nuns, and Benedictines, and she is invoked against storms and rains. Her name, Scholastica, means scholar, or she who leisurely devotes herself to her studies. She was instrumental in the foundation of female Benedictine communities, which allowed women to lead monastic lives according to Benedict's rule. Most people are familiar with Saint Benedict because of the Benedictine order and monasteries which bear his name. Saint Scholastica was Saint Benedict's twin sister. Although she is not as well known as her brother, sometimes God listened to her prayer more than her brother's. Almost everything we know about her comes from the dialogues of Saint Gregory the Great, himself a monk and abbot. The siblings were born around 480 to a Roman noble family in Nursia, Italy. The twins' mother died at birth. Scholastica seems to have devoted herself to God from her earliest youth, as the account of Benedict's life by Pope Gregory the Great mentions that his sister was dedicated from her infancy to our Lord. It was a time when the Roman Empire was crumbling and the Goths and Vandals controlled Italy. When Benedict was old enough, he left home to study in Rome, leaving Scholastica with her father. Scholastica remained heir to the family, living a life detached from earthly goods. Benedict experienced a religious awakening which caused him to renounce corrupt secular society and to join a band of Christian ascetics. He later became a hermit, living in the hill region of Subiaco. When Scholastica learned of her brother's total dedication to the Lord, she was determined to follow his example. She first sought permission from her father to be allowed to dedicate herself to religious life. She soon joined a monastery near Nursia. She lived there for some time in the community of pious virgins. In the meantime, Benedict's fame as a holy person grew to such a point that people jealous of him once attempted to poison him. Benedict left them to their evil ways and began organizing groups of his own followers into small monasteries. In about AD 529, he and a few disciples came to the mountain above the city of Cassino, where they established the monastery. This place is now known as Monte Cassino. Scholastica, in the meantime, established a convent in the nearby town of Plombariola. The brother and sister communities were about five miles apart. The convent is said to have been under the direction of her brother, giving rise to the female branch of the Benedictine order. Scholastica used to recommend observing the rule of silence and avoiding conversations with people outside the monastery, even if they were devoted visitors. She used to say, either speak of God or keep silence, for what in this world is so worthy of speech? Since Scholastica was not allowed to enter St. Benedict's monastery, they visited each other at a nearby farmhouse to discuss spiritual matters once a year. Many years passed. Scholastica was not keeping well. The brother and sister met at her convent as part of their routine. They spent the day singing psalms and speaking about the spiritual life. They talked about the great goodness of God. They talked about how they could help others follow the example of Jesus. She evidently loved meeting with her brother. When evening came, they sat down to supper and continued the conversation until quite late. The rules of the monastery were very strict. It allowed a monk to visit his family only for one day and never allowed him to stay overnight. After a delightful day of visiting, Scholastica asked her brother to stay the night. She was afraid that she would not live until his next visit. Benedict refused, saying that his rule required that the monks be in their monastery at night. Scholastica once again begged her brother to remain for the night, but he refused. 
Heartbroken, Scholastica folded her hands, put her head on the table, and quietly wept and prayed. As she prayed, a storm began, so terrible that no one could venture out. The holy nun had poured forth such a flood of tears that she transformed the clear sky into a great storm. Benedict, seeing that he could not return to his abbey in such a storm, complained, God forgive you, what have you done? Scholastica answered, I asked you to stay, and you would not hear me. I asked our good Lord, and he has answered me. If you can now depart, in God's name return to your monastery and leave me here alone. Once again, Scholastica's pleas won the favor she was seeking. Saint Benedict had no choice but to stay and speak to his sister all night long about spiritual matters, including the kingdom of heaven for which she would soon depart. The next morning, the two parted and were never again to meet on earth. In the days that ensued, Scholastica became weaker and finally succumbed to the illness. Three days later, Benedict was praying in his monastery. As Benedict looked toward the convent, he saw a white dove circling the building, finally disappearing into the blue. Benedict then announced the death of his sister to the monks. He placed her body in the grave he had prepared for himself and arranged for his own to be placed there too after his own death. Saint Scholastica was outstanding for her simplicity and faith. She spoke to God directly in reverent familiarity without complex or elaborate ritual. As an abbess, Saint Scholastica instilled in her sisters the necessity of living in accordance with the great Benedictine aim that in all things, God may be glorified. O oh God, to show us where innocence leads, you made the soul of your virgin, Saint Scholastica, soar to heaven like a dove in flight. Grant through her merits and her prayers that we may so live in innocence as to attain to joys everlasting. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.